So I'll show you one of the most important pieces that you need to complete before heading into Canada. Welcome back to Van Life Mama. So I have to do an errand today before I go on this trip and I thought I would take you guys along with me because I see a lot of posts on um, camping and van travel Facebooks of people asking how you go about getting into Canada from the United States. So I have to go across the river. If you guys watch my previous videos, you know across the river means going from where I live in Ontario to Michigan. So I have to go to Michigan to pick up some packages that I have shipped uh, to the States because it's a lot cheaper to ship packages to America than it is to Canada. So um, I'm going to head across the river and I'm going to show you guys what it takes to get into the United States from Canada and then back into Canada from the United States. So let's go. So in order to get to the United States from where I am here in Canada, you have to cross the International Bridge. Uh, you do have to pay a toll for that. I believe it's $5 Canadian right now. And all you have to do to get across is show your passport and your proof of vaccination card. This is why I can't wait to be in Arizona. Minus 25 degrees Celsius, guys. It's pretty cold out. So I made it across the river. It was a pretty painless process. It took less than five minutes. He asked for my passport. I gave it to him. He asked where I was going. I told him to pick up packages. He asked what the packages are. Um, I had to tell him that I was going to Sheboygan, which is an hour and a half south of Sioux, Michigan, which is where I am, because there are no COVID tests available in Sioux, Michigan for today. And you need a molecular COVID test to get back into Canada um, no matter how long you've been over for you and if it's for a quick trip. So I had to book an appointment an hour and a half away from where I am just so I could come across to the States to pick up my packages. Like normally I would have done this on Monday when we leave, but we're leaving at five in the morning and the place that has my packages will not be open then. So I had to come today because these packages are for this trip. So I had to come get them. So I'm gonna go into Walmart and get the essentials that we always get when we come across the river, beer, cereal, chocolate milk. That's what we get when we come to Walmart. Then I'm gonna go pick up my packages and then I'm gonna to head to Sheboygan. But going across to Sheboygan, I get to show you guys what it's like to go across the Mackinac Bridge, the Mac. A lot of people are afraid to cross that bridge. I've been crossing it my whole life, so I'm not scared of it but it'll be fun to show you guys what it's like.
Okay, so here I am at a company called Pack and Ship. This is a company that allows you to use their address to ship parcels from like Amazon or anywhere else to them and then pick them up. So it kind of acts as my American address. So uh, let's head in. I'm afraid to see how many parcels I have. Okay guys, apparently I had seven packages all together. You know it's pretty bad when you just walk in the door and you don't even need to give them your name. <laughs> they automatically know who you are and know where your packages are. I mean, it's kind of nice. So I'm approaching the Mackinac Bridge now. Uh, so you do have to pay a fare to get across the Mackinac Bridge. It's $4 both ways. So I have to pay $4 to go over and then I have to pay $4 to come back. I think the main thing that scares people about the Mackinac Bridge is it's a suspension bridge. Um, so it's quite high. There's almost nothing between you and the side of the bridge. As you can see, um, when we get further onto the bridge, the walls are very, very low and you can pretty much see everything below you, especially when, like today, there's high winds. So you see this uh, transport in front of me, he has his four ways on. Bigger vehicles such as transports and trailers and stuff, they need to go very slow when it's high winds on the bridge um, at risk of being blown over. And trucks have been uh, blown, not necessarily over the side, but blown to the point where they were teetering over the side. <laughs> So I think that's what scares people about the Mac is the height, the low walls, and the um, possibility of getting blown over the bridge in high winds. All you have to do with crossing the Mac is take your time, don't be nervous, just pay attention to your driving. If you want to drive um, in the inside lane, drive in the inside lane. I'll show you what it sounds like when you drive over the grates of the inside lane. My husband makes me drive on the inside lane because he's kind of afraid of the outside lane. But the inside lane kind of makes you go like that. And it makes uh, a pretty interesting sound. So I'm just about to get on the grates here. So I'll show you guys what that sounds like. I can't see anything outside <laughs> off the bridge because it's so foggy. I hope you guys can hear that. I'm on the grates right now. So the grates allow for the bridge to actually move with the wind um, and be flexible. It's almost like a song when you're driving over the grates. It is quite a long bridge to go across. But when you can see off the sides, the views are beautiful. Well, now we're off the grates <laughs> here. It's back to normal. So I just finished my COVID test. Um, fingers crossed that the results come back soon and negative. But uh, I really appreciate how this state makes it so accessible for people to get free uh, COVID tests. Um, 
especially the different types of COVID tests, like pretty much in Canada, we can get a free PCR test if we're like, right now, the only way you can get a PCR test actually is if you are like a symptomatic healthcare worker or like an immunocompromised person or somebody in the hospital uh, or somebody who works in like a long-term care setting or a community setting. But that other, other than that, they're not testing anybody. So I really appreciate that the America makes the test readily available and just like PCRs, not test, antigen test. It's so convenient. Okay guys, so I stopped in Mackinac City here. I'm at uh, Colonial Michelin Mackinac. It's right under the Mackinac Bridge. I'm gonna have to put some music over this footage because it's windy here, very windy. But let's see if we can see some blue ice. I don't think the ice is gonna look very blue today just because it looks more blue when there's direct sun and it's pretty cloudy and windy today. But let's still go check it out. It's a really cool thing to see when it's sunny and you can really see the blue. Luckily, I always keep gloves, a toque, and a neck warmer in the van. <laughs> it's uh, the wind chill's about negative 25, negative 30 right now, so I can't stay out here for very long. But I just thought I'd show you guys some of the blue ice. Now the blue ice is beautiful, but it's also dangerous because as it gets shoved on shore, it's getting shoved closer and closer to people's homes and almost compromising the structural integrity of their homes. So a lot of people who live on the shoreline here are quite worried about that. But let's go back to the van, warm up, and then head across the Mac. The favorites to represent the AFC in, in the Super Bowl. If not, they're one of the top two or three. They turned the I'm almost back from Sheboygan. I stopped at a rest stop that's just before the International Bridge to go back into Canada. So I'll show you one of the most important pieces that you need to complete before heading into Canada. You need to complete the app called the Arrive Can app. So this app can be found on like the Apple store, like uh, the Google store. And it's an app where you have to put input your, your information and your proof of vaccinations. And you have to do this before you arrive to the border. When you get to the border, it actually comes up uh, when you scan your passport so they can already see that you have the information in there. If you don't have the information in there, if you don't fill out the Arrive Can app, they will probably turn you away. So very important to complete the Arrive Can app before you try to go over to Canada. Sometimes you may be picked to do a random at-home COVID test. I'm going to be entering by land. Um, port of entry is the Sault Ste. Marie Bridge and I'm going to be entering today. At about at about two forty five. So my passport and information is already programmed into the Arrive Can app. If it wasn't, you would have to scan your passport into the app. Yes, I do have proof. What country? United States. No. So now they just want to know that you have quarantine plans um, if for some reason you did end up positive. 
And then the self-assessment, they're just asking if you're feeling sick at all. That's pretty much it. So now that I've submitted, I'm just going to wait for it to submit itself. And then it's going to give me a QR code um, that I can keep on my phone. But they'll already have the information at the border when I get there. They also email me a copy of my ArriveCan app uh information so i have the qr code i have an email and they'll have it on their systems so that's all you need to do to get into canada just make sure you're fully vaccinated and you have a molecular test from within 72 hours of the point of your arrival into canada it can't be a rapid antigen test it has to be a molecular so a pcr or a nat test and aat test those are the only ones that they'll accept to get into canada so now i'm going to head on home so while editing, I realized I didn't do an outro for this video. So that's what you have to do to get into Canada from the United States. I hope you enjoyed this video. We leave for the trip in two days. In my next video, I'm going to post a updated tour of my minivan. So if you guys want to see a tour of how I have the minivan set up for Corbin and I on our trip, stay tuned for that next video to come out on Thursday. And in the meantime, Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, the like button, the comment button. The more you like, the more you comment, the more the algorithm will pick us up. And I hope you come back for our next adventure. Bye, guys.